So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a completely 100% reproducible R Markdown document. So when you first open up R Studio, it should look something like this. We're going to start by going ahead and making a new R Markdown document. So we're going to go to File, New File, and then R Markdown. It's going to ask us for a title and the author. You can call the title whatever you want. And we're going to select PDF as the output. Then I'm going to hit OK. And that's going to create a blank R Markdown document for me. So I'm going to start by erasing everything that's under this first gray chunk here. So I'm going to highlight everything below that and erase that. And if you haven't used R Markdown before, you might not be familiar with why it's so great. So I'll just show you really quickly why R Markdown is so powerful. So R Markdown is actually going to allow you to combine R code, R code output, paragraphs, and LaTeX all in the same document. So for example, here, I'm gonna put a header and then I'm gonna write some paragraph. And I can also include some math symbols as well. So for example, I can say that x squared is equal to six. And then I can actually add some R code in as well. So to insert an R chunk, I'm gonna use three back ticks, which is the button near the escape key on your keyboard. And then you're gonna use some curly brackets and inside the curly brackets, you're gonna type R. After the curly brackets, if you hit enter, that will start a, a new R chunk for you. And then you can put our code directly into this chunk. So let's say, for example, I have some data that I've made in an Excel file and I want to load that in and I want to create a quick plot of it. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is uh, set my working directory for this document. So I'm going to be telling RStudio uh, where the file that I want is located. So I'm going to use the function set wd for set working directory and then i'm going to pass in quotes the file path where my file is located so if you're on a windows machine that's going to look something like c colon slash users slash your username and then wherever you've got it saved on your computer next we're going to want to load in our data so for me, I'm going to be loading in an Excel file. So in order to load in that Excel file, I'm actually going to be requiring a package called the read Excel package. So first I'm going to load the read Excel package by using the library function. And then I can go ahead and load the data set. So I'm going to give it a variable name. So I'm going to call it my data. And then I'm going to use the read underscore Excel function and I'm going to pass the file name. Oops. So one thing I forgot is you also need to end the chunk with three back ticks as well. So now that I've ended my code chunk, I can hit the play button and that will run all of the code in this section. And now my data has been loaded in and I can see that up in my environment. So let's say I now want to explore what that looks like really quickly. So I've got an X variable and a Y variable, and let's say I want to create a plot of these data. So I'm going to use the ggplot2 package to create a plot of these data. So I'm also going to need to load the ggplot2 package. And again, I use the library function for that. So now I can use the ggplot function from the ggplot2 package. Uh, so the first argument is going to be the data set that you want to create a plot of. So that's my underscore data. Uh, next, we're going to pass the aesthetics. So the first argument is going to be our x variable. So remember, my x variable was called x underscore var, and my y variable was called y underscore. And to create a line plot, I'm going to add a geom line layer. And if I press play on this code chunk, it will run all of that, and I should have a plot that's created. So now let's say I want to turn this entire thing into a PDF. 
So what I'm going to do is press this knit button right here, and I'm going to press knit to PDF. If it's your first time doing this for this document, you're going to be prompted to save the file. So I'm just going to call this my R markdown. And now it will knit into a PDF. And here I've got the PDF that contains my paragraphs, the math that I put in using LaTeX. I've got my uh, code chunk right here. And then I've also got the output from that code. So this is a really nice way to put everything all into one document. So now let's say you wanna make your R Markdown document completely reproducible. So you wanna send somebody your .rmd file and you want them to be able to run the entire file on their own computer so that they can also produce that same PDF that you were able to produce on your computer. So in order to do that, we're gonna have a few extra steps. So I should note that the strategy that I'm about to do here, this is only applicable if you're using RStudio. So first make sure you've got the package that's called RStudio API. So once you've got the RStudio API package installed, uh, we can go ahead and use it. So in my first code chunk in my document, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a vector that contains all of the packages that I use in my entire R Markdown document. So I'm going to make a vector called required packages. So in here, I used the read Excel package and the ggplot2 package. And then I'm also going to include that RStudio API package that we just installed. Next, we're going to figure out which packages the user that we're trying to send this file to already has installed on their machine. So really what we're trying to do here uh, is we're trying to get the user to install any packages on their computer that they don't already have installed so that when they try to knit this PDF, it will actually go ahead and install any of the packages that they don't already have that are going to be used in the document. So I'm going to create a vector called need install. And this vector is going to contain the packages that the person doesn't already have installed on their computer. So to do that, I'm going to uh, index on the required packages vector that we just created. So to index, we use square brackets. And then we want to know which of the packages in the required packages vector is not so the explanation mark means not in their list of installed packages. And you can find out what your installed packages are by using the installed.packages function. So if we just take a look at what this part looks like without the exclamation mark first. So right now, without the exclamation mark, this is going to be the list of packages out of the ones that you put here that the user has installed on their computer. So if we add an exclamation mark, it's going to be the, the packages that the user doesn't have installed on their computer. So for me, since I've already installed these three packages on my computer, when I run this, I should see nothing in return. So let's just verify that. And that's the case. But when you send your file to someone else, it might be possible that they don't have all of these packages installed. Okay, so now we've defined a vector that contains the required packages that the person will need. And we've created a vector that uh, contains the list of packages that they need to install before they can run your R Markdown file. Okay, so now we're going to install all of the packages that are in the need underscore install vector. So if the length of that vector is greater than zero. So in other words, if there's a package that they need to install before they can run your R Markdown document, then what we're going to do is install that package. Okay. 
and we can actually install multiple packages at the same time. So if we pass in that vector, it's going to install all of the packages uh, from this list that the person doesn't already have installed on their computer. Okay, so next we're going to load all of the packages. So uh, just like when we were using library earlier to load a single package, now we're gonna load all of the packages all at once. So to do that, we're going to use the L apply function and we're gonna pass in the list of required packages. Um, and then we're going to use the function require rather than library. And we're going to pass an argument to the require function that is called character.only and we're gonna set that to true. So if I run this bit of code, it's going to load every single package that's in this list that we created up here in this vector, sorry. Okay, so next we're gonna to need to set the working directory, um, but if we're sending our file to someone else, they're not gonna have the exact same file path that we have on our computer. So what we wanna do instead is we wanna figure out the location on the other person's computer where this R Markdown file is located. So in order to do that, we're going to use a function from the RStudio API package that we just installed earlier. So I'm going to create a variable called directory of the script that I'm currently working in. And I'm going to use the dir name function, directory name. Inside of that function, I'm going to pass the file path where the R Markdown document is located for the person who is running your code. So the RStudio API package actually has a function that will grab the uh, file path location of the file that you're currently working on. So that's get source editor context. And then if you use the dollar sign operator, you can get the file path using that. So if you wanna see what that looks like on my own computer, if I run just this highlighted part of the code, you can see that this is the file path that I had defined earlier. So when you send this to someone else, this will update with whatever folder they're currently working from on their computer. So now once we've defined what the directory is, we want to actually set the working directory as that path. So we're gonna use the set WD function just like we did earlier, but this time we're gonna pass the directory of the file that we're currently working on, which is what we just defined on the previous line. So once we've done that, we can actually get rid of the previous lines of code that we had where we were loading in packages. And now this should be a fully reproducible script. So as a quick recap, what this is going to do is it's going to define the packages that you're going to need in your entire R Markdown document. It's going to check which of those packages need to be installed on the computer that is going to run the R Markdown document. It's going to install any of the packages that aren't already installed. It's going to load all of the packages, and then it's going to set the working directory to wherever this R Markdown document is saved on the person's computer. Okay, so now I'm going to knit to PDF again, just to show you that it does still work the exact same. Okay, so now to make this fully reproducible, we have one final step. We're going to create a zip folder that contains this R Markdown document, as well as any of the dependencies uh, that we use within our R Markdown document. And then once we send that zip folder to someone else, they should be able to unzip that folder and run everything without needing to change literally anything at all, which is magic. Okay, so I'm going to navigate to the folder on my computer where this R Markdown document uh, and the associated dependencies are located. 
and I'm going to put all of them into a new folder. And then I'm going to zip that folder. Okay, so now I'm going to close our studio. Okay, so now I'm going to move this zip folder to a different location on my computer, and then I'm going to unzip it and show you that the whole thing runs without me needing to change anything. So I'm going to unzip these files here. Now I'm going to open that R Markdown document and see that I'm in a different file location than I was before. Okay, so now I'm in a completely different folder path. So let me just show you where we're working from this time. So you can see that the folder path that I have now is different than the one that I had before. So ideally, I should be able to run this file. Uh, and even though I'm in a different file location, it should still find the correct working directory and load in my data properly. So just to show you that, I'm going to knit once again to PDF. And just like that, my R Markdown document has found the correct location for the Excel file. So now I can send that zip folder to anyone I want, and I've completed a 100% completely fully reproducible R Markdown document.